We did a complete end game attacking tutorial and I said to you guys in that video lads look if you can hit 300 lights within a week's time then I'll drop for you guys a complete end game defending tutorial well nearly a thousand lights within the first week of that video being up lads which is absolutely insane if we could do the same for this complete defending tutorial that would be amazing because if you hit the like button it helps me out and drop a comment as well what tutorials you want endgame coming up on the channel for the progression towards the end of FIFA 22 but lads we've got a lot to get through this is the complete endgame defending tutorial in FIFA 22. Three men, three men around him to somehow find some space. Ronaldo, fantastic opening the drive back. He's made himself the tiniest bit of space. Almost feels like a bit of a toy. Didn't really go for it. It's a display game. Absolutely ridiculous. The last to go on the goal line. On the goal line, the finest. We talked about Aussie FIFA. He's not here to make up the numbers. First of all, of course, you got to get into formations and tactics. I'm not going to give you guys any specific formation to use, any specific tactic, or any specific player instruction. I'm going to give you guys a baseline to work off so that you can determine your own custom tactics and player instructions. I've always said to you guys, determine what works for you. Don't copy mine. Don't copy DH Tets. Don't copy MS Dossery. Play around with the tactics yourself. Take a baseline and then to figure out what works for you. I've always said that lads, it's very, very important because what works for me may not work for your game style. What I will say though is I recommend to you guys in the defense using a two CDM formation. That's one recommendation for me because if you have two CDMs, you're able to recover better in the defense, especially when your opponent is counter-attacking you and you're a lot more solid because you have your defensive line. You then have those two CDMs dropping in front of those center bats for you to cover the holes whilst also pressuring the opponent at the same time. And of course, lads, I'd recommend having a four back formation. I know the 352 was quite popular post EPREM, and yes, you could use that. You could also have the two left mid and right mid players drop back to make a five back, but in my opinion, it's better just to have four at the back, and that's what I personally use, but you can decide otherwise. For your CDMs and your wing bats, though, I have recommendations as a baseline. For those players, in terms of your CDMs, I'd recommend them having for your instructions on stay back while attacking. This allows them to stay back as you progress up the pitch and then cut off the counter attacks. Break them down as you lose the ball and your opponent attacks you. I'd also recommend having those two CDMs on cover center. That allows them to stay central in front of that defensive line rather than drifting out wide, leaving space in the middle and the default player instruction for CDMs on two CDM formations is cover wing. So change that if you like as a baseline to cover center. Also for the wing bats I recommend having stay back while attacking lads. This is important and it's what I recommend so that you don't have your wing bats bombing up the field and you being left vulnerable with two center bats only at the defense. In terms of the depth though this is something that I do recommend you guys do and that is have at least 60 or above. Too little depth means that you can't put enough pressure onto the opponent. Your defense drops too deep, and unfortunately with this year and the way that the defense sets up with the AI and EA in terms of their you know, hyper motion setup, defenders will sit back as deep as where the goalkeeper will be, which means your opponent can exploit <clears throat> the space being left in the middle of the 18 yard bots, okay? So to prevent that, you should have a higher depth on your custom tactics so that you can prevent your opponent from exploiting the space that's being left open in the defense. In terms of width, I'm gonna give you one more recommendation. And that is have it on at least 45 or less. And the reason why is because EA have gone ahead with a patch of recent, and I believe it was a month ago, where they have actually increased the width between the center bats and the wing bats and center bats, okay? Which means there's more space to exploit in the center, especially if you were to have it on at like 50 or 60 width. So I'd recommend having at least 45 or below, and this will allow you to tighten up that defense as your opponent is trying to get into your box. Moving into the basics, but these are very important, and I recently did the tutorial on this, and that is actually pressing tackle in FIFA 22. Previous years, you didn't have to. And one example I'll give you is FIFA 20. In FIFA 20, we didn't have to press tackle. What we could do is we could jockey, line the defender up, and the AI of the defender as he approaches that attacker would make that tackle quite cleanly, 
you wouldn't have to press tackle. And the reason why people adapted that was because number one, it worked. Number two is when you were in the 18 yard bots and you press tackle, it would give away a foul more often than not. So people adapted the defending technique to not press tackle and line up the defender with the attacker. The trouble is lads, FIFA 20 is no longer. We're in FIFA 22, it's two years ahead and you have to press tackle this year. If you want to come out with the ball, you need to press tackle. It's a common mistake that people make, and it's one that I highly recommend you guys doing in terms of coming out with the ball cleanly, because they will make the tackle in terms of, you know, lining the defender up and jockeying, but not actually pressing tackle. It'll go back to the attacker, and they'll go, I lined the defender up. He tackled him, but it kept going back to him. One of the reasons for this is because you weren't pressing tackle lights. So it is important that you press tackle to come out with the ball in feet. As I did in the attacking tutorial, I will do in this one. I basically am going to progress this defending tutorial along so that each of the categories are relatively linked to each other. And I think the best thing to go off tackling is jockeying. It's the closest thing I can think of in terms of what we should be teaching next, lads. Now, with jockeying this year, one mistake people make is they just use either R2 or L2. Cut it out. Literally cut it out. The jockeying technique you need to use this year is L2, R2 or RT, LT at the same time. It activates speed jockeying. What it allows you to do is react to the attacker quick enough so that you can move along with him, read his movements and get that tackle in. The trouble is when you hold just L2, it is way too slow. You cannot react quick enough and the defender is very stagnant when you hold just L2. When you hold just R2, you're more susceptible to, let's just say, over committing and that is a very big mistake that people make to leave the defense vulnerable so you need to use both you need to use l2 and r2 to activate speed jockeying however one thing i do notice with speed jockeying is people make the same mistake over and over again and that is over committing and the reason why is because when you hold the left stick okay the left stick in terms of this one here and you hold it too far where it clits okay you can hear it where it clits you're more susceptible to overcommitting, and that is because it's very touchy. And what I mean by touchy is when you hold L2, R2, and you move the stick, they're quite reactive, right? They're very, very sensitive to the left stick. This causes people to overcommit. So one solution to this, and the way that all pros are defending when they use this jockeying technique, is they're very minute on the left stick. So when you're close to a defender, you need to be minute. When you're far away, you need to be clicking it, okay? So clicking it in terms of moving across vast distances. When you're close, you need to be using it minutely so that you don't overcommit. What I will say though, is that you should be using R2 when approaching the attacker, okay? So you shouldn't just be holding L2 and R2 at the same time, or LT, RT if you're on Xbox, and basically attempting to approach the attacker with this technique. No, you need to sprint towards him and then as you get within that two meter radius, that is when you want to activate the speed jockeying technique. So that is L2 and R2 to basically start approaching the attack. Now one actual good way of not over committing and actually positioning the defender in line with the attacker uh, is actually moving the left stick minutely back and forwards, back and forwards. And you'll see this when I'm defending in FIFA 22, and especially if you watch me live on Twitch. Obviously, I, I stream live on there, lads. So if you want to see me play live and come hang out with the lads, then go and check it out. Link's in the description. But <clears throat> what I will say is you will see me move back and forwards with the left stick, okay? And you will see the defender do little, you know, reactive movements like this so that I can... Quickly react to the direction the attacker is going when he is attacking, when he is dribbling, when he is sprinting, okay? If he goes left, I'm ready to go left. If he goes right, I'm ready to go right, okay? So I'm moving it back and forwards very minutely so that number one, I don't commit, and number two, I can, obviously, react. <laughs> Moving into slide tackling. Now, lads, it's very, very useful, of course, should we be overusing the slide tackle button? Absolutely not such an amateur mistake. And generally, it's pretty much the thing that people love doing when they don't play FIFA. You know, you might get your girlfriend on there and all she'll do is slide tackle you, right? <laughs> but what I will say though is, with slide tackling, it becomes very useful when the attacker takes a bad touch and you want to pounce on him, okay? And I'm gonna get into pouncing later on. But what I will say is, 
okay? You need to use slide tackling to your advantage. What is that? It's either when you want to pounce and the attacker takes a bad touch and you want to win that ball, but you're quite still far away from that attacker. You can't actually get to him in time. With that bad touch, if you were to use stand tackle, so you use a slide tackle, or for a tactical foul. Now, this is very, very useful if you're, you know, being counter-attacked and there's a, you know, two-on-three situation or a three-on-two situation, it's good to take them out, okay? Especially if you're in the lead and there's not many minutes left in the game, it's important to take them out, lads. So, you can use this to your advantage. Press the slide tackle button, which is either square on PS5 or it's Ets on Xbox, and you can use it to pounce on the opponent, especially when he's taking a large touch, or to do a tactical foul. I did say I'd delve off into pouncing the opponent. This is actually a very, very effective defending technique. Quite advanced, but it's very, very useful, especially if you're wanting to take your defending to that next level. Now, what is pouncing on the opponent? Pouncing on the opponent is when you're covering the defender, so you're cutting, cutting the passing lane off, and then you notice the attacker on the ball starts taking a large touch. What you can then do is pounce on him, okay? So you anticipate it, especially if he's sprinting at the pitch and you might be counter-attacking you. You're covering that pass, you're tracking the run, then you notice a large touch is being taken, bang, hit him. And what I mean by hit him is, hold L2, R2 to activate speed jockeying, progress towards him, either slide tackle or stand tackle. And what you will do is more than likely come out on top, especially if you time it right. And the timing is key, but as I said, lads, what you can do is you can cover the pass. Once he takes that big touch, bang, hit him. And you need to be reactive, but it's quite effective when you are. Second, man, press. It's always been around, lads, well, at least in the last few years. And... Uh, what I can say is it's never been as overpowered as it has this year in FIFA 22. The player that you are second man pressing with literally sticks onto the attacker and its movements. The AI is super broken with this defensive tool. Now, it's super, super useful, lads. You can hold R1, it's on PS5, or RB on Xbox. What happens is the player or the second player closest to the ball will have a green icon show up above their head and they will start to press the opponent. What this means is we can use it for multiple things. We can use it when we're tracking runs, we can use it when we're wanting to press with two players at once, we can use it when we're wanting to press with multiple players at once. It also depends on how good you are at right stick switching, but lads, second man press is super, super useful. Player switching with L1. Now this is the regular switching technique that most people know about. In fact, I would say 99% of FIFA players know about L1 switching. If you don't, that's how you switch to a player in FIFA 22. Now unfortunately, for those lower caliber defenders or players, that's all they know how to do. They only know how to use L1 switching. Now that will get them by from Div 10 to Div 4. From Div 4 and upwards, though, it will not get you by. You will start to struggle in the defense, lads, and that is because you have not developed or you have not adapted and you have not started to use right stitch switching, a very crucial switching, player switching technique. But L1 switching can be useful. It can be useful in terms of, number one, restabilizing when you're right stitch switching. So if you're right stitch switching and you miss flick, okay, to a defender, use L1 to restabilize. Number two, when you're second man pressing, what you can do is you can switch to the player who is second man pressing the opponent with L1 because he is the closest defender to the attacker and that's how L1 switching works. It switches to the defender who is closer to the attacker. L1 switching is also useful if you are wanting to select that defender who is close to the attacker, okay? Not second man pressing, but just whoever is closest, L1 switching is useful for that. If you're relatively new to FIFA and you watched that previous segment, you're probably thinking, what the hell is right stick switching? Right stick switching is a technique of selecting a defender with the right stick. And what happens if, especially if you have it on player relative, not ball relative, you can select a defender from the angle of the defender that you already have selection of. So if you have the selection of the center back and I want the right back, I can flick up with the right stick to that right back or whoever you're wanting to select. And it will basically select the defender 
in line with that player. And that, as I said, is on the basis that you have it on player relative. If you have it on ball relative, you can flick the right stick to whoever is around the ball from that angle and you will select that defender. I highly recommend using player relative. And that is because, and I've broken it down in a previous tutorial, when you have it on ball relative, you can only select the defenders who are around the ball. If you had on player relative, you can select any defender on the pitch that you want because you can continue to flick the right stick towards the direction of the player that you want. So if the ball is on the left side of the pitch, but you have it on ball relative, you can only select the five players or whoever you know is around the ball from that. However, if you have it on player relative, I could select the player who is all the way over on the right side of the pitch. Okay, so if it's on player relative, I can flip to any player, and that is the actual setting that I recommend you guys using in FIFA. Delving off, of course, from right stick switching is tracking runners. This is why right stick switching is so key. You cannot track a runner who is in the distance if you're using L1 switching. It's impossible, lads, because the ball will not be near that attacker. And it's super important to right stick switch to the defender near that attacker making the run. Literally, tracking runners should be your first priority, lads. And if you're wondering, well, how do I put pressure onto the actual ball carrier? This is where second man pressing comes in. And that's why I had a brief segment on second man pressing before, because it sort of ties in with right stick switching. Using right stick switching and second man press at the same time is something that is very, very useful in your defensive game, okay? And especially when you're tracking runners. You can track the run by right stick switching to the defender near the attacker making that run and hold R1 at the same time. Whilst you're tracking that run, you can obviously have the defender who is near the player on the ball put pressure onto, you know, that player. And basically, once he gets near him, this is when... L1 switching might come in handy for you. You can you tap L1. Because that player is the closest to the player on the ball, he will be able to be selected, and then you can make that tackle away from the ball carrier and, of course, prevent that through ball from being put through to the runner and, obviously, by putting pressure onto the ball carrier. Now, there might be scenarios where you need to track two runners at once, and this is very, very important. As I said, it's number one priority, lads. So it is super important that you learn right stick switching. And if you do see two runners running up the pitch at the same time, keep switching between the two defenders near them and continue running them back. As long as you have a bit of control of both defenders at the same time, then, of course, you'll have no trouble, lads. And it will allow you to prevent those runners from getting in behind and having your opponent put a through ball through whilst you are doing so, okay? So make sure you're tracking all runs at once. Selecting multiple defenders at once to pressure the opponent with right sit switch. We're starting to get into the more advanced defending techniques, lads, but you will benefit from these if you can get them down pat. Now, this is actually how your higher caliber pro players defend. MS Dossery, DH Tets, all of those defenders all of those pro players, they use this defending technique. I started using this defending technique around two years ago. I adapted it from, obviously, MS Dossery, one of the best at it, lads. And what it entails is basically you selecting multiple defenders at once, okay, with the right stick. So you're flicking to multiple at once to essentially control multiple at once, position them all at once, and progressively press the opponent so he has nowhere to go. So you put a plastic bag over his head, you suffocate him, and he can't breathe. You don't want him to go anywhere, lads. You want, don't want him to have time to think what he is going to do in the attack, lads. And the way you do that is with this pressing technique. You can use team press if you want. You could use pressure after possession loss. Does this work time in, time out? No, it doesn't. And you don't have full control of your defenders because I can manually press my opponent. I can decide when and when I want to press him manually. I don't have to rely on the AI to do it for me. And if you rely on the AI too much, you will be susceptible in the defense because sometimes the AI will make a mistake. Now, the best way to do this is actually to combine second man press and right stick switching lads. So what I will actually do is I will select a defender, I will run up at him, I will then select off him to another defender in another position. Hold R1 so that the original defender that I selected near the def near the attacker will start to press him with second man press. I then have control of another defender. I then run him up towards the attacker on the ball. I then let go of him, 
by selecting off him to another defender. I will then hold R1 so that the second defender starts second man pressing the attacker. And I'm basically closing him in. Okay, I'm using multiple defenders at once to close him in. And again, this will take practice, but once you can get it down pat, you will benefit a lot. And I'm talking tenfold in your defense, especially if you can get the right stick switching part down pat in your defense. Having said that, there's a bit of a disclaimer. You need to have balance, okay? What I mean by that is if you see a runner, you need to track it. And there's some space that needs covering because if he was to progressively flow the play into that space, okay, then of course you need to select a defender near there to then cover that hole. Super, super important. Pick your times when you press your opponent, okay? I usually do it, let's say, 70% of the time. The other 30% of the time, I'm, pr I'm tracking runs and I am covering space which is necessary to cover, okay? Super, super important, lads, to have balance in this defending technique. Anticipating the flow of the play or the pass. This is very advanced. It incorporates most defending techniques, whether that's right stick switching, defensive awareness, L1 switching, and of course, second man press. What I mean by that is when your opponent is making plays, he's passing around, and you are attempting to read him. What right stick switching can be used for is to basically think two steps ahead of your opponent. So whilst he is thinking of which pass to make, you have already selected the defender. That is more than likely going to be the pass that he makes, okay? And you have brought him in front of that uh, attacker. All right, and whether your opponent is looking to switch the ball, I've already selected the left wing, let's say, to then run up towards the wing back who's about to receive the ball before he even switches the play. This is anticipating the pass. This is anticipating the flow of the play. This is thinking two steps ahead of your opponent. FIFA is, again, you could use the analogy of chess, okay? It's trying to think ahead of your opponent what move is he going to make and what's my counter move? That's defending for you in a T and uh, yeah, it's very, very important. Cutting off the pass to the striker. Again, this incorporates right stick switching. It also incorporates anticipating the pass. Now, whether or not your opponent passes into the striker, it doesn't matter. The important thing is, is that you're cutting, covering that pass. Okay, because what is the goal in FIFA? The goal in FIFA is to score a goal. How do we score a goal? We get it into our attackers. Where are our attackers? They're in front of the defensive line. Where are you most vulnerable in the defense when your opponent finds the striker's feet? It's pretty much around that 18-yard box area. The thing is, what is your opponent trying to do when he's playing around the midfield? Trying to find the striker's feet. Because when you find the striker's feet, what happens is you draw defenders out, it opens up space and runners start to run in behind, okay? Especially if you're holding it up with the striker, all right? So we need to cover this. We need to cut this off. And the way we do that is by right stick switching to the defender to bring him in front of the striker, okay? Whether or not the opponent makes the pass, I've already done this. I'll select the defender. I'll then drag him in front of it to cover it, okay? If the opponent makes the pass, great. If he doesn't, great. I covered it and I prevented that ball into him. And then eventually we can attempt to try and win the ball in the midfield before he gets that killer pass into the attack. Defending counter attacks. I'm sure you guys get in many of these situations. You're like, what the hell? Why does he keep counter attacking me? Why do I keep conceding lads? Probably because you're overcommitting. Probably because you don't know how to right stick switch. Probably because you're not running directly backwards. This is what this segment is about. If you run diagonal, if you run directly to the attacker who is running forwards with the ball, you will not be in between the goal and the attacker because the actual angle won't be right. What I recommend when you're in situations where you're attempting to defend against a counter attack is that you run directly backwards. And this is on these, let's say, three on two situations or <clears throat> two on one situations. Run directly backwards because what it does is it allows you to get yourself in between the goal and the attacker, it also allows you to basically allow or wait or indeed hold up a bit of time for your other defenders to run back to then help you with the attack, okay? If you run directly, you know, diagonal or sideways or, you know, at least try and jockey the defender, 
jockey the attacker as he's progressing forward. You lose momentum. You won't be in between the goal and the attacker, and you'll more than likely leave the pass open to another player who is running forwards in the attack. Run directly backwards will allow you to get the momentum up, and it will allow you to get in between the goal and the attack. Angling the run so that you cover the pass, but also approach the attacker progressing forwards. As again, what I was saying before is this is very good for those, you know, three on two, uh, two on one situations when you're not sure what to do. <clears throat> and the trouble is, you go directly forwards to the attacker on the ball, he'll just pass it to the next attacker as a, you know, a tapping opportunity. If you just cover the pass, you'll give the attacker on the ball too much time. You need to have balance in this defensive situation, and you need to basically angle the run where you're angling it to cover the pass, but also approaching the attacker at the same time. Super important, lads, but it will allow you to defend in these counter-attacking situations, cover the pass, but also putting pressure onto the ball carrier. Offside trap, a very, very, very useful technique of defending in FIFA 22. Now, there are three different scenarios where you should offside trap. And to perform an offside trap, you're just double pressing down on the D-pad, okay? And your whole defense rushes up at the same time. Three scenarios. When your opponent's back is to you, when he is dribbling. It's when the ball is halfway between the ball passer and the ball receiver. Or it's when your opponent is building up from out the back. And the reason why these are the three scenarios where you should use offside trap is because you're not at risk of having a through ball being put through. If the opponent's back is to the defensive line, it's more than likely not going to be able to get that pass off and the accuracy will be down. So your opponent, unless he's very low caliber, won't try that pass. When the ball is halfway between the ball passer and the ball receiver, there's no way of anyone passing the ball through you know, to an attacker so you can offside trap to put more pressure onto the opponent. And when your opponent is building up from the back and he's maybe switching the ball or he might be passing around, attempting to get up the pitch, this is when you want offside trap to push the defenders up to the halfway line and basically put more pressure onto the opponent. You know, you don't want to be sitting too deep in FIFA. Okay, that's what I iterated in the custom tactics segment. You don't want to be sitting too deep because if you're sitting too deep, there's too much space to exploit. So if you do put pressure into your opponent with the offside trap, it can be very useful in terms of putting him off, getting more players up towards the ball carrier, and in general, allowing you to press him as he is attempting to attack. Clearing headers. Now I've gone through a tutorial with you guys in terms of how to win more headers in FIFA 22, especially in the attack. I went through in that video and I said, you need to hold down the shoot button because the amount of power that you, all right, hold on to the shot, will determine how high the player jumps. And that still remains the same. You know, when you're passing, and you want to, you know, head of the pass down, hold it. If you want to shoot, you need to hold it. And the trouble, but the trouble is people got confused with that and they thought, okay, when I'm clearing headers, I need to hold down the clear button. No, if you hold the clear button down, they won't clear it. Okay, they won't jump very high and more than likely the attacker will win the ball. If you tap the clear button though, they will clear the ball and the animations they do to clear it are very, very, uh, they're in your favor. They're in your favor, okay? So if you're tapping the clear button, that's what you wanna do, all right? Because when you hold it, they don't clear the ball as much and in general, lads, they will be out jumped by the attacker, whether it's Insignia or whether it's CR7. There you have it, lads, it's a complete guide to defending end game in FIFA 22. I've gone through what works and I haven't gone through every single nitty gritty thing in defending but I've gone through what works. So the meta defending techniques in FIFA 22 and this is how I defend. It works lads. We are top 12 in Oceana with an RTG account. We made top 8 in FGS 3 and I'm defending with these techniques lads. So it works. So trust me on this. And a lot of the techniques that I'm defending with and I've taught you in this are what other pros are using as well. And I'm talking your top tier pros. MS Dossery, DH Tess, everyone lads, they're all using these techniques. So be sure to adapt them in your game. That's going to signal the end of the video though. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm doing tutorials on Instagram and TikTok. 
More specifically, check out Instagram because I'm showing my progress the No Money Spent series on there, which is the series where I show you the ins and outs of what it takes to make an eSport event, whether it's vlogging the journey and you know showing you my uh, fitness journey, showing you my diet, and also my progression in the game. It's everything. And you also see those episodes on this channel as well, the No Money Spent episodes. So check that out. I'm also coaching one on one. If you want me to help get you bet if you want me to help you get better at defending with these techniques, join the academy. It's down below lads. And uh, yeah, I can help you guys out over there. But as always, I hope you have a good day. I'm out. Sign up. Au revoir. Adios salam ciao. Goodbye.